Welcome to the Family Beacon Podcast from Minnesota Family Council with hosts Grace Evans and Moses Bratchrude. Stay informed on the top stories on life, family, and religious freedom. Get the facts, stand for truth. Hello and welcome back to the Family Beacon Podcast from Minnesota Family Council with your hosts Moses Bratchrude and Grace Evans. We are so glad that you have tuned in for another episode. We are uh, presenting uh, the facts so that you can Mm -hmm. uh, stand for truth. And in this special episode, we're revisiting an an earlier episode where uh, I talked to with our our in-house pro-life activist, Grace Evans here, about uh, some of the quote unquote best arguments for abortion, uh, which are actually not that great. (laughs) This is part two. (laughs) Yeah, and so this is part two where uh, we have even more pro-choice mm-hmm. arguments, pro-abortion arguments, and Grace is going to respond to those. And some of these are really thorny. Mm-hmm. Some of these are really, yeah. some of these are really, they really make you think, and that, that's what they should do. And so we hope, uh, as, as we said in the earlier episode, we really hope that, that if you're on the dinner table, or if you have a friend or family member who is strong, who strongly disagrees mm-hmm. with you on this issue, but you want to maintain that relationship and you want to be a witness for life. Or even if you have a friend who's considering abortion. Right. Because oftentimes that woman is very scared and vulnerable and people are pressuring her to abort. And she might have this question like morally, what about this or what about that? And if you can be equipped to stand for the truth, that is my goal. This is Moses's goal. It's the goal of Minnesota Family Council as an organization. And if this podcast even helps one person, and I know it will help many more than that, I are we would be so happy and so thrilled because ultimately we just want to give you the facts that you can stand for truth because that is the most important thing that you can do besides following Jesus um, Mm -hmm. is standing for truth and fighting for the preborn like we talked about in the last episode is something that I'm very passionate about and every Christian should be passionate about fighting for and and we should all be passionate about ending abortion yes so I want to start with one. The, this first mm-hmm. argument, I have to say, this is one of the thorniest ones. Yeah, it's I didn't hard. get to it in the first episode. So a lot of arguments for abortion mm-hmm. focus around the life of the mother. Yep. The idea, which we did discuss in the previous episode, so that the idea that pregnancy is somehow a disease, essentially that it's somehow a threat to pregnancy to, to the woman, and that's just not true. Pregnancy is a natural function yep. of your body, as we discussed. But um, there are cases where uh, where pregnancy uh, can threaten the life of the mother, mm-hmm. yep. and that will be used. You'll see that frequently used as a justification for abortion. So the idea of like an ectopic pregnancy, mm-hmm. or just the idea that abortion could, for any reason, be medically necessary. Mm-hmm. That's the phrase. Right. Right. So. Can you uh, can you respond to that? Yeah, absolutely. I like responding to this one. Uh, Live Action has an amazing video on this done by an actual former abortionist. So he wow. is a medical professional. Um, so what I'm going to say is very similar to what he said and what others have said. Uh, so what I'm saying is backed by the experts. And you can actually view that video if you want a more in-depth response. But uh, in a nutshell... Um, women's lives obviously are very important. Moses and I are pro-life, not only for the pre-born, but for all of life. So we're pro-life for women as well. Yes. And unfortunately, ectopic pregnancies do exist. And I want to break down what that is for you because a lot of people don't really know what it is. They just hear it used to justify abortion. And so it's when the uh, egg should be implanting in the uterine lining. That's where it ought to implant, and then the baby will have a healthy pregnancy. Sometimes, unfortunately, rarely, a uh, egg will implant in the fallopian tubes, which is not where um, the child should be developing. And Mm -hmm. in most cases when that happens, if the child continues to develop there, the mother's life will be in danger, and in some cases she could possibly die, which is tragic. And just like imagining being diagnosed with this Moses would be so hard. Um, Mm -hmm. And this is just one example of the medically necessary, quote unquote, argument. Uh, But this is the most common one. And so obviously compassion, we need to be compassionate. But in addition, um, we need to distinguish between uh, preterm delivery and abortion. They are two separate things. Mm -hmm. And uh, pro-choicers like to make them seem like they're the same thing, like there's no difference. There absolutely is a difference. So abortion is the direct and intentional taking of an innocent child's life. That is the definition. Mm -hmm. However, a preterm delivery is when one goes in and delivers the child early, sometimes before 21 weeks, which is about viability, depending, um, will have to uh, deliver the child early. And when that happens, 
oftentimes, tragically, the child will die um, because the child is either too young to survive outside the womb or because um, the technology uh, just, the, there's complications or something. And that is a tragic um, incident. And I, even though it is tragic, I think that the woman should be allowed to choose whether she wants to do a preterm delivery or if she wants to continue with the pregnancy. Um, so when she does that, that is not directly nor intentionally killing the child. They would deliver the child, try to um, protect life, and give the child a chance to take his first breath, which is a very, very different from per specifically dismembering the child or yeah. crushing his skull or poisoning the child. Uh, another argument that's used with this medically necessary argument is, like, what if a woman has to go through chemotherapy, right? Like, yeah. she's diagnosed with cancer. She's, like, two weeks into pregnancy or something. Or, actually, you don't even usually know you're pregnant. And then, like, six weeks into pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, again, I support the woman's right to choose if she would like to undergo chemo. And oftentimes, the child can still survive. Sometimes, unfortunately, the child um, will need to be delivered or will die. Again, that is not the direct and intentional taking of a child's life. Can I just say, this is really, this is really getting personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I've been in this situation, uh, or 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 that anyone in my close family has, but I do remember um, we talked in the last episode about uh, uh, introduce uh, the last episode about abortion questions. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh! So I just um, I just uh, Grace talked about why why she's pro life and um, and 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 how that just became such a huge issue and. I just want, this is reminding me of why I'm pro-life. Mm -hmm. And and I'm pro-life because of my mom. And um, so my mom, when 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 uh, when my my brother and I were born, my mom, my parents were married, but, but later on they divorced. And so my mom mm -hmm. raised us as a single mom. And so I do, I do have firsthand experience of what a lot of women are going through uh, or what their children would go through when they say, I can't have a... I can't have a baby because I'm not in a stable relationship or, or you know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But I also, but, but not because of that, not because of, uh, my mom was a single mom. I just, my mom's witness mm -hmm. for life was so um, impactful to me. Wow. And I remember a specific conversation where we actually had this, where we were, we went to someone's house for mm -hmm. coffee after church. And, and that was the, the question. The question was, can a woman undergo medical treatment mm -hmm. when it would be a risk to the child's life? Yeah. And now I, I respect what you're saying, Grace, but I, I, I think that, and I'm thinking, I've thought, I'm now I'm thinking about this with my own wife, which is making me cry because my wife is pregnant. But my mom believes, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a strong opinion on this, but my mom believes that if you're pregnant, you should not actually risk, mm -hmm. uh, not actually take anything that would not do anything that would seriously mm -hmm. risk the pregnancy like my wife is not drinking alcohol of course she's she's not uh, smoking she never smoked mm -hmm. and she's even limiting her caffeine intake and, and things like that which aren't even wouldn't kill the baby but that can have deleterious effects and so forth so my wife is being so careful mm -hmm. and so like um, the if my wife were horrifyingly to get cancer, mm -hmm. it, like <laughs> it's just the worst possible thing I can imagine, would I support my wife in getting chemotherapy when I know that it would potentially harm the infant? I'm not sure that I would. Mm -hmm. And I and my wife and my wife and I have talked about this. My wife is on the same page. She would not mm -hmm. take a medical step that would that would harm the child, yeah. potentially. And I'm definitely on the same page as you, Moses. I wouldn't either. I do think uh, people But should you're saying women should be free to do yes, that. Yes, because and it's I a life agree. and a life. Right. And you're not actively, again, intentionally or directly killing the child. Mm -hmm. um, I think women should have the choice, but I do agree. And I, my gut instinct would be to protect my child. I feel like very motherly, even towards my uh, four-year-old uh, brother, who's mm -hmm. very cute. Um, I can confirm that he is very cute. He's adorable. Oh, my goodness. Um, and so I just, I know that my instinct would be protect the child. Um, and I, I hope that that would be most women's response. And I believe yeah. that that would be the case. But I'm just um, laying it out there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I took that in a direction. I just want to say, uh, I just want to, I just want to thank my mom because I know she listens mm -hmm. to this podcast. I just want to thank her What's for. What's her name? Uh, my mom's name is Sue. Shout out to Sue. Thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your support, mom. Thank you for raising me and my brother. And thank you for being the first 
pro-life activist that I ever knew. That's amazing. <laughs> so, Grace, I have yep. more arguments for you to debunk. Let's hit them. I'm so uh, excited. <laughs> yes. So this is the most common one. Okay, right. The single most common uh-huh. argument. My body, my, my body, choice. My choice. My body, there my choice. Is. My yep. body, my choice. <laughs> we both knew what that was. <laughs> yeah. uh, you hear that repeated ad infinitum. Don't women deserve a choice? Mm-hmm. Don't they mm-hmm. deserve to, to have a choice over what happens with, quote, unquote, their own body? I just, this one, it's just, it's so annoying because everyone says it and it's so easy to debunk you have one line and it is the baby's body is not your body i will Bam. say okay it, great we can go i home. will say it one more time <laughs> the baby's body is not your body and i think i've talked i've talked about this so much on the podcast i say this all the time but i will briefly debunk it one more time for you guys from the moment of conception a baby has its own unique dna which is separate from his mother's so mm-hmm. it is not it's ba- it's, it is not the mother's body it has two hands and two feet two arms and two legs its own brain its own heart that begins beating at around six weeks uh, so it is a very unique child that is separate and distinct from his mother. Just because it is within the mother does not mean that it is a part of, of the mother's body. And so if you say, don't women deserve a choice? I absolutely support women choosing things for themselves, like her hair color, like the car she wants to get, like her career. I am very pro-woman and pro-woman empowerment. I love to see women hustling and achieving their dreams. Uh, however, um, when it's a cho- this is a choice that does not just affect a woman. It affects a child. Yes. And the choice is literally life and death. And so no human is able to choose to murder another ch- another person. Uh, it is it, it goes against our constitution and it goes against morality. And so this argument is very easy to debunk, but we hear it all the time, unfortunately, because people deny the humanity of the preborn. Again, always bring it back to the humanity of the preborn and what abortion does, and you will win the argument. That's just that's just exactly like mm-hmm. uh, we've we've talked a lot about Carl Truman's book of the rise and so triumph of the mother itself, and yep. it is like read that book to understand how we got yeah. to a place in our culture where people are claiming it's just absurd, but they're claiming that that the child in the womb is somehow uh, is somehow just a clump of cells, just a parasite, and the reason it is is not because of any science, because there isn't any science to support that view, but because of this inflated idea of ourselves, mm-hmm. of our rights, of our of our uh, of our bodily autonomy. We have such a such a, this insane view of bodily autonomy that even includes the body of another person inside you, and. So I, 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 can't, I can't improve on what Grace has said, but I just I, I want to make that book mm-hmm. recommendation. Here's, an, here's a more, this is an argument that, um, that Christians need to do something about. Yes, because, I, I agree with that. Because it's like, th- this is something that is not some type of unfixable, horrifying right. problem. And that is uh, the, the foster care system is broken. Mm-hmm. And, yep. and so, so when, you have, when you have women who... Uh, who are in a position where they just feel, or, or teens, who feel that they just can't raise a child for life or say, well, there are many, many families who would love to adopt that child. And, uh, you know, I, I know, um, we all know probably people who have benefited yeah. personally from adoption. And uh, and that's an amazing thing that, that we have adoption. But uh, oftentimes you'll hear that, well, the being in the foster care system is hell. And there's a chance that if you if you gave birth and then gave up the child to adoption, there's a chance that the child could up in the foster care system. Or, I guess more commonly, if you didn't give the child up for adoption, but then later on through drugs or alcohol or whatever, if, you, the, if the state needed to intervene and take the child and then put the child in foster care. So, Grace, the foster system is broken, so that means I should be able to have an abortion. What do you say? So this is a simple, like, quality of life argument, right? Mm-hmm. And so people use this, they use this with Down syndrome, too, and mm, so I yes. will touch on both of them. Yeah. Uh, but first with the foster care system um, is broken argument. This one, again, like Moses said, this is something that we as Christians can do something about. I would love to adopt in the future, um, and I know lots of Christians who would, but if you're a Christian right now and you're listening to this, uh, definitely pray about if this is an option for you or your family uh, because – fostering is beautiful adoption is beautiful um and it's something that we need more people to do uh and we definitely do need reform moses and i are all for reform of systems because we know that they can become corrupted because man uh, is fallible yes and we always need checks and balances so definitely push for reform especially if you have influence in that sphere uh however this is not a good argument to kill a child because uh, killing a child is at least 10, it's 10 times worse than uh, putting him in the foster care system because you're equating taking away life to poor quality of life. Now, what's worse, uh, being um, not having the opportunity to take your first breath or having a rough life until you're 18 and hopefully then able to turn your life around a little bit. Um, 
So uh, it is far better to uh, live it all and even to have a hard life than Human to... life is a good. It, it is something it is that valuable. is... valuable. It's good and it's something that you should not... You should not... Den- and also suffering. We have this misconception that suffering makes your life that somehow not worth living when... You know, like we live in a fallen world. Suffering is not good, but suffering also makes joy more sweet, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's so good. And and so, like, you know, you don't have to look far before you like go on Wikipedia page of someone that you know uh, is famous or who grew up in uh, that you knew grew up in a poor background, and you might find some stories of them growing up in foster care, yeah, or them yeah. growing up in uh, just a really unstable home environment, and yet that person then went on to achieve great things. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't, even if they just have a completely normal life, they deserve the right to have it. That's just such a simple simple thing. And I I can't believe that we're still in a place where people are denying that. And when it comes to Down syndrome, sorry to get fired up here for a second. Moses, don't steal my thunder. No, no, I'm sorry. But when it comes to Down syndrome, like we all, I, I, I think I personally have been just absolutely so humbled by just the joy of people with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. And, and it, like, my mom, uh, speaking of her again, she, she volunteered for many years in a, a ministry for people with, with, um, with mental handicaps. And those, those people are some of the happiest people you'll ever yep. meet. Their quality of life is great. And moreover, their, their parents will say the same. Their parents will often say having a Down syndrome child was the best thing. that I've, I've literally heard people say I've this. I've heard that too. And they're so cute. Oh, they're so <laughs> precious. Um, but going back to what you were saying, like, mm-hmm. uh, about there's countless people that are diagnosed with something or, like, their quality of life might not be good, but then they go and achieve amazing things. It's either Bach or Beethoven, one of those musicians. Um, I know this story. I learned about it in school. He had, like, seven siblings. His mom was a high-risk pregnancy, mm-hmm. and, like, uh, the doctors thought he wouldn't survive after birth mm-hmm. and, like, he would be stillborn because her his mom had delivered multiple stillborn children. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he was born, no defects, and became one of the most successful musicians of all time, wow. which is phenomenal. Um, so just goes to show <laughs> I don't think it should be a musician. Um, anyways, <laughs> I, it just goes to show that you, if you're going to try to kill children because of their quality of life, you are inhibiting future geniuses. Or even if they're not going to be geniuses, even if they c- grow up and they become the most normal desk job person, like very middle class, that life is the most precious thing and we cannot play God. Uh, so with Down syndrome, I hate this so much that in the Netherlands, it's like 99% of children in the Netherlands that are diagnosed with Down syndrome are aborted. Uh, same in Iceland. Iceland, it might be 100% actually, mm. uh, which is... Yeah, they're, they're bragging. The, state, yeah. the, the government of Iceland has bragged about eliminating Down which syndrome Which is entirely. tragic because uh, I've written an article on this. Our producer will have it on the screen. Um, it's about the value of human life in disability. And uh, it Oh, was, that was a great article. Thank you. Yeah, I love yeah. that article. Um, but it was just about, you know, how... Our value is not something that can be taken away by deformities. Our value rests in the image of God, and every single human um, has the image of God from the moment of conception. And so um, we are valuable inherently. And so no level of disabilities or the way in which we contribute to society or cannot contribute to society does not determine our worth. Like, we cannot earn our worth. And so if someone's disabled or someone has Down syndrome, they are just as valuable as the most successful person in the yes. world. Successful person in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, because our success does not determine our worth. And so I, it is absolutely disgusting that people want to murder Down syndrome babies. And uh, it really goes back to Margaret Sanger's original intent, which was eugenicide, and she wanted to reform the human race and to only have the best of the best, which is is terrible because uh, Down syndrome children are beautiful, and their love for life is something that we can all learn from, and their joy and their bubbly personalities. And, yeah, there are so many stories of women who – their doctors were like, oh, your child is Down syndrome. You need to abort. Mm-hmm. And she chose life. And she is so grateful that she chose life. And she loves her child. So do not like that argument. Yeah. Disgusting argument. It just doesn't. It, do, it doesn't hold water. Like nope. if, if, there's, if there's an issue of quality of life, as you've said, yep. then we can improve the quality of life. Exactly. Like we, there's things we can do other than any life. Okay. Also, wait, wait, one more thing. Yeah. Quickly. Uh, for every child that's waiting to be adopted in the United States, there are 20 families waiting to adopt. Wow. Which, so that just puts it into perspective. And yeah. I just wanted to throw that out there. And so obviously foster care system needs reform. However, don't think there aren't people willing to adopt. Yes, that that's an excellent point. Um, I have three more arguments for you, Grace. Yep, go ahead. The first one, kind of funny. 
Uh, no uterus, no opinion. Okay, this so one. So I'm a man. Uh, I, I'm a Can man. Can you just, like, shut up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is so exactly, bad. Exactly, yeah. I hate it. Because uh, I could talk about that one for so long, but I'll keep yeah. short. Short and simple. No uterus, no opinion. When in human history have we ever used this argument? If you're not directly involved in something, then you mm. can't have an opinion. Never have we used that, right? Like, uh, in Nazi Germany, would we have said, well, if you're not involved directly, then you can't care about these innocent Jews that are going to concentration camps and being murdered. No, we wouldn't right. say that. Why would why would we ever use this? And yeah. it's ridiculous because then the same, the progressives, the radical left, who will say, no, you no opinion, will then go and say, oh, a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. It's anti science. <laughs> and it's just our society is breaking down. It's just pff, like, I, I just, when people use this argument, it's just so dumb. Like, you don't have to be a certain gender to care about justice. In fact, we need men to stand up, to rise up, to take uh, to take control, and to uh, fight for the lives of their preborn. We need men to take control, huh? Their preborn children. <laughs> I mean, I think I would make a better CEO than Moses, but oh, okay, interesting. Vote in the comments we'll have down have below. That. Would Grace be a better CEO or with Moses? I remember recently you were you sent me this article about I'm in like charge how of deleting the comments about just... how <laughs> Gen Z, not on Instagram, on Gen Z, um, Gen Z is more likely to like order their boss around. And to tell oh, them, like, yes. what tasks need to happen. That is so true with me and Moses. I'm always like, Moses, make sure you do this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, do this. and I always make sure to not do it. <laughs> yeah, and then I just slack him, like, five billion times. Anyways, uh, where were we going? Okay, no use, no opinion. Justice does not have a gender. Hey, that's a good catchphrase. Justice doesn't have a gender. Hey, yeah. That's yeah, good. Let's use that. We could do an unwoke video on that. Uh, but it's just, it's not true, and we ne- would never use that argument for anything else. And also, these people yeah. celebrate. They're like, oh, real feminists fight for pro cho- pro-choice women and their rights, which is like, okay, you can care about this issue. Men can have an opinion about abortion if, if, it's, if the it's the right, the right, right opinion. Yep. But it's the same for women, honestly, because they say, no, you're just no opinion. But then I'm a pro-life woman who has gotten death threats on social media multiple times for standing for life. Wow. And they say, you can't have an opinion. You're a hater. You hate women, which is ridiculous. Because, I'm guessing those threats came from men. Uh, mostly men, yeah. See, which there is, you go. Which is ridiculous because I... Why can't I have an opinion? If I'm a pro-life woman, don't I get to voice my my opinion? Because this concerns me. What would I get out of get out of this other than fighting for the most innocent? I get nothing out of this. That's why. That's I, yeah. It's just it's a ridiculous argument. I don't like that argument. Next argument. Let's yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So two more arguments for you, Grace. Yeah. The first one, and this is tricky. Most abortions do take place in the first trimester. Yep. Although in Minnesota, every year, there are abortions that take place even in the third trimester because abortion is legal until birth in yeah. Minnesota. Disgusting. Not in every state, but in Minnesota, and we are working to change that uh, as a side note for you. Uh, so please continue to support our work. We'd love to, uh, we'd yep. love to continue to work to end abortion in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. So uh, here's the argument right now, though. Uh, most abortions take place in the first trimester. The, the allegation is that the fetus, the child, cannot feel anything in the first trimester, so it's not it's not a crime, it's not murder. Right. What do you say? So here we go with this. Um, that's not true. There was a time when we could have claimed ignorance with this, right? Like, oh, we don't know if the fetus can feel pain. Also, side note, fetus means baby in Latin. So whenever people are like, it's a fetus, not a baby, they're literally saying it's not it's not a baby. It's, it's a baby, baby. It's a baby. Right. So ridiculous, but um, <laughs> not true. Uh, scientific research has shown that um, fetuses can feel pain uh, 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 around like 15 weeks, and we it might be even sooner. We don't know for sure. Um, but regardless, let's let's just say, like, let's take the argument and say, okay, babies can't feel anything in the first trimester. Even if that were true, it wouldn't make abortion morally right. Because right. when you're in a coma, you can't feel pain. Uh, but you can't kill someone who's in a coma. Um, it, you can't directly and intentionally end their life, I should say. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's not a good argument. And also, if we're going to have, like, pain be the determiner, like, then when, when would we say it's fine to um when when could you limit abortion could you limit abortion after pain because people use these arguments all the time right moses they're like oh well when the heartbeat is detected then you can't kill or like when it's in the second trimester that's too early Mm -hmm. or uh when you know right before birth it's fine but not after birth right even though a lot of democrats support uh killing children after they're born alive after an abortion which is right yeah that's that let me just talk about that for a second yeah we should it's 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 so bad like the uh, uh, people, uh, pro-life people in the uh, in the United States legislature have tried for 
for a very long time to pass a bill that would make it illegal to kill a child who has uh, who has survived an abortion. And this happens mm-hmm. a non-zero amount of times. Yeah. We have spoken, I've I personally shaken the head of a woman who survived a saline abortion. And, uh, and, and, and they're, they're out there. It happens. So what should you do when mm-hmm. that happens? Do you leave the child to die? Or do you have to prov- provide life-saving aid, as you would if, if you were... all of the Democrats, Democratic candidates for president in the last election voted um, to, to leave the child to die. That, that is act. just ch- absolutely chilling. So I just a reminder cannot. of where pro-abortion logic goes. It yep. goes to leaving infants Which, to die. And this is consistent, right? So in one sense, it's like, okay, you're finally being consistent. If you think that children in the womb aren't valuable of life, then it follows that no children are valuable of life. So then when do you cut it off? Then is all human life not meaningful and like not worth anything? Yeah, and, and, and look at the ethicist Peter Singer, one of the most one of the right. most popular and controversial ethicists of our day, but he will literally say that you can kill a child up until the age that he thinks that they're self-aware. Which is so ridiculous. up until age three. And so uh, fundamentally, you know... Barbaric. Feeling pain doesn't give your humanity. Like we talked about this before. You know, the image of God gives you humanity, and you're human from the moment of conception, even if you were born and you couldn't feel pain throughout your life. You have a soul life. from the moment of conception. I think right. we, we talked about that in the last episode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that argument is not a good argument. Let's... Uh, close out with our final argument, which yes. I hear very often. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, it, 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 we talk about making abortion illegal. And I think they're already sort of accepting our premise. Mm-hmm. Like they're already saying, all right, okay, if we'll, we'll go along illegal. with you. If we yeah. make abortion illegal, what would happen? And one of the things they say will happen is that uh, that women will still get abortions, but they just won't do it in a clinic and they'll do it in a way that's unsafe and they'll get hurt. Yep. So what do you say to that? Yeah, so like back alley abortions. And this is when they use like the hanger image and like ugh, it's so gross yeah um so uh illegal abortions were occurring before roe v wade and yes women were getting hurt uh if we made abortion illegal which let's pray that that will happen women would still get illegal abortions i mean women get illegal abortions here still um and so right yeah um but that doesn't mean that we should just keep it legal because women still get hurt with legal abortions. As we know, women are rushed to the emergency emergency room. They start hemorrhaging and losing so much blood. Their uterus can be perforated. So many other side effects, also mental side effects as well as physical. And so legal abortion isn't safe. Illegal yeah. abortion is even more dangerous, of course. Um, but just we need to fight for legislation that will protect life and will protect um, the sanctity of the preborn child. Yes. And so um, just because things are going to happen illegally, doesn't d- that's not a good argument because it's like saying, okay, well, if you're going to make murder, murder illegal, it's still going to happen. Okay, well, we're still going to have it be illegal because we still have a moral standard. Yeah. Um, or you could use the argument with marijuana, which I feel like is more applicable or other thing, other substances like, you know, even just like alcohol or something. Um People are still going to do these things. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't have a standard because the role of the government from the Bible, as we know, is to pr- protect good and to fight against evil. Mm-hmm. And so if the government is failing at that, which in this area it currently is, our role as Christians is to stand up, to rise up, to be bold, be courageous, um, as the Lord commanded Joshua. The this, this whole narrative of men not caring about their children and this being a women's issue and a woman's thing is so antithetical to women's success because women deserve support and loving care and yes. uh, compassion. And so don't um, be a part of a side that's empowering men to be weak and to um, turn aside when women are suffering. Don't support that narrative. And the uh, side that's uh, empowering men to predate upon women. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. With sex trafficking even. So don't empower that side. And I want to close on a more positive note because I know this episode has been this episode has been very heavy, mm-hmm. and we've talked about a lot of things and a lot of arguments. And I again, my prayer is that this will help you. Yeah. Feel free to reach out to me either on Instagram. We'll have my Instagram tagged here on the screen, or you can reach out to uh, Moses at uh, Minnesota. Moses at mfc.org if you'd like to um, comment on anything, or you can just leave a comment in the description or in, on our videos. You. Yeah, we'd mm-hmm. love to hear your feedback or if you want part three of this video. Uh, but again, I want to close on something positive, and that is well, what is my vision for America and for Minnesota specifically going forward? Because with Jobsy Jackson, we recently heard from Renee Carlson about uh, things that could happen there at the Supreme Court level, and we could possibly abolish Roe at the national level, which would be amazing. Mm-hmm. And Moses and I would be thrilled. Yes. Uh, as 
as we know, though, we still have Dovi Gomez here in the state of Minnesota, which Moses has done a recent video on it, which you should check out, Unwoke. Yes. Um, so this could we be... We have work to do. Yes. Minnesota could become an abortion mecca. Now, I said that this would be... I'd be ending on a positive note. Here's my positive note. Uh, if we do abolish abortion on the federal level, Moses and I and the rest of Minnesota Family Council will work tirelessly to abolish abortion in the state of Minnesota. Uh, I... Um, I, I would work so much to save innocent children in our state. And my vision for Minnesota and Moses's vision is a state where life is cherished from uh, conception to natural death and where every child is seen as precious yes. um, with their inherent value, their imago dei, and we will fight until that is the case. We're going to change hearts and minds because, again, we're not just fighting to make abortion illegal. We're fighting to make it unthinkable. Mm-hmm. And we will do that through powerful pro-life messaging, which is yes. what we do here on the podcast, on our Instagram, social media, um, through speaking events. You can request one of us to come speak at your church or organization. Just email us mm-hmm. or comment uh, or reach out via DM. So we will fight for that. And even if it takes my entire life, um, I will never stop fighting. Uh, and William Wilberforce is a very inspiring person to me, mm. and I think, feel like I should have talked about this in the last episode because he inspired me to fight for life. He worked his entire life to abolish slavery, and it wasn't until his deathbed that he actually succeeded. Yeah. And that is a powerful example of me f- for someone that doesn't give up in fighting for the most vulnerable. And it truly can take your entire life or two lifetimes. And uh, I, we need more Wilberforces. We need my generation to rise up and to be the change that we want to see. Again, yes. if not us, then who? If right. not now, then when? And I know that my generation is a powerful force. We're made of activists. We fight for the turtles. Why can't we fight for the unborn? Oh, my gosh. That is – can I bring this into front landing? Absolutely. Because you, you mentioned Wilberforce, and one thing that he and people in his circle did – they have circulated medals mm-hmm. and coins, and they were very famous. And the coins had the image of a slave kneeling and in chains and with his hands raised in supplication. And they had posters throughout all of England, yeah, too. Yeah, and, and the, the slogan said, am I not a man and a brother? Yeah. And, and the idea was we need to humanize enslaved people so that you understand this isn't just some economic reality. We need the slaves to pick the sugar cane. This is disgusting because human beings... Yeah. I, I I am a man and a brother and I am being enslaved. And that is that was disgusting and they were able to help people in 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 England see that. And we are doing the same thing right now through things like this, through ultrasound technology, through medical advances where we are showing we are showing the world that the, the preborn has always been human, but we're showing we're showing that that's the case in a way that will soon be undeniable. We are winning. Grace yep. is winning. We are the pro-life generation. We're not backing down. That's why pro-choicers are scared. They know we're winning. They are scared. And uh, like I like to say, I like to say this a lot, but I survived uh, Roe v. Wade, but Roe v. Wade will not survive me. It will not survive Gen Z. Yes. We will rise up. We will become Wilbur Forces of our generation. And I have uh, every confidence in you. So use this video and use the last podcast, part one, to rebut the most common pro-abortion talking points and reach out if you have other ones you'd like us to talk about. I love talking about these things. These episodes don't yeah. require any prep, which if is awesome. You hear, if you hear more pro-abortion arguments that we did not cover, send those over to us. We would love to see if there are any new ones doubtful but uh, you <laughs> might you might hear some some crazy ones we would love to hear those and respond to those in the meantime this has been the family beacon from minnesota family council with moses Pratrude and pro-life activist extraordinaire grace evans thank you so much for watching remember that if you're on itunes hit uh give us a five-star review if, if you enjoy this podcast that really helps other people to see the podcast show up in their search results and if you're on youtube hit that bell icon so that you get a uh, a little ding and a notification every time we release a new episode. We're so grateful to have you guys along for the ride watching and listening to the Family Beacon from Minnesota Family Council where you can get the facts so that you can stand for truth. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to or watching this episode of the Family Beacon podcast from Minnesota Family Council. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you're up to date on life, family, and religious freedom. You can follow us on Instagram at MN Family Council and subscribe to us on YouTube to watch our content. Get the facts, stand for truth.